Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and in this video I'm going to show you how you can paint the custodes of the Solar Watch. I'm going to show you step by step how to paint their armour and robes, but I also want to show you how to paint their power weapons as well. If you're enjoying my content why not give me a like and let me know in the comments below. It shows YouTube you enjoy my content and it really helps my videos get out to more people and grow the channel and I'll be sure to reply to as many comments as I can. You can also go over to my Instagram where I post short form tutorials of my videos and you may even see what I'm working on before I upload a video. And if you want to share with me and the community what you're working on then go and post it over at the r slash tabletop ready subreddit or you can even send me an email. I've already made a tutorial showing you how to paint the classic gold armour of the Champions of Terra so now I want to explore painting a custody from the Solar Watch. For this tutorial I've left some of the parts separate to make it easier to show you how to paint, but if you choose to fully assemble yours it's absolutely fine. I recommend undercoating your miniature first of all with Wraith Bone Spray. I really want to achieve some bright vibrant colours and Wraith Bone Spray is perfect for this. Let's start by painting the armour with some Screaming Skull. Whenever you're painting it's always a good idea to thin your paints first and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. Keep your brush moving and try not to go over any areas you've already painted to prevent any texture as the paint dries. I also like to paint in multiple thin layers so we don't lose any of the detail. So let your first layer dry and repeat the process until you have a nice solid colour you can work from. Now we have our base colour painted, we want to worry about painting all the gold details. We want to do this before we continue working on the armour so we don't have to worry about ruining any work we may have already done whilst painting the gold. So take your time painting all the gold details now with Retributor armour being as neat as you can, but not to worry so much as we can neaten up the Screaming Skull after. Once you're happy you have all the gold painted, give it a wash with some right Clean Flesh Shade, again so we don't have to worry so much about being messy. You only want to use enough to cover the gold details comfortably and let it fully dry before moving on. If you're like me then you'll see why I suggest doing these steps before working on the armour as it can be very messy. So before we work on the armour let's use some Screaming Skull again to neaten up our base colour. The armour is going to need some definition but I also want to help stop it looking so flat and make it look more interesting. Let's create a wash mixing some Skeleton Hall Contrast with twice the amount of Lamy Medium. The Lamy Medium dilutes the contrast so it's more translucent creating a kind of glaze wash. Apply this over the areas you've painted the Screaming Skull and once this has dried you'll see it's added some subtle tones in places without affecting the brightness of the Screaming Skull. Let's continue creating that definition by applying a recess shade with Seraphine Sapia. A recess shade is a technique where you paint or apply whatever you're using to shade with directly into the recesses in shallow detail. It's a lot neater and won't affect the main colour you're trying to shade. Our armour now has some definition helping to bring out that shape and detail which means we can now move on to doing some highlighting. And because we're going to be highlighting other areas I want to quickly go through some things that may help. First of all you want to have a brush you can get a fine tip with. And I like to keep a brush separate just for highlighting. I don't tend to thin down the paint as much either so we can achieve a strong colour without multiple passes like we would paint in a layer. And before you start painting your highlights it's best to remove excess paint on some kitchen paper first so the brush isn't overloaded creating those unwanted thick blobby lines. When highlighting try and pick out all the prominent edges first because you can just angle your brush and run it along that edge to create the highlight making them easier. For the areas you can't do this, just take your time painting thin lines to create the highlights where you want the details and edges to be more pronounced. Highlighting does take some time and effort to do, but I think it's always worthwhile once you see how they help to bring out all the details on your miniatures. Let's finish up the metallic details on our custody now, starting with any silver details. Paint any details you want to be silver with iron hand steel, and then give these areas a wash with Norn Oil. Next, layer the gold details back up with Retributor Armour, making sure not to paint over any definition created with the right Clean Flesh Shade wash. You can now highlight both the gold and silver details using Stormhost Silver. 
Now that we have the solar watch armor finished, I want to show you how to get all the other details painted. It's time to start showing you how to get all the other details painted around our custody starting with the red cloth. Start with the base colour using Evil Sun Scarlet, remembering multiple thin layers is better. Next paint some Mephiston Red into all the shallow folds of the cloth. Then some Corn Red into the deeper recesses. To highlight the cloth, start with a chunky highlight with Wild Rider Red. And then paint a thin highlight within the Wild Rider Red using Fire Dragon Bright. With the cloth done, let me show you how to paint some of the other details. Some panels on the shoulders can be painted with some Mephiston Red. Then use some Norn Oil around the edge of these panels. For the gloves, start with some Dryad Bark. Now give the gloves a wash of Norn Oil. And finish up with a highlight of Gawthor Brown. I think we're ready to get the Custody Staff painted next. Now we're done with the armour details. There's a lot of detail on the staff, just like the armour. So let me show you step by step how you can go about painting them. You want to get the staff painted first of all with some of Adam Black, making sure not to paint over the gold and silver details we've already painted. We can now use Eshin Grey for a chunky highlight on the staff, and then Dawnstone for the fine edge highlight. For the hand grip bridges I'll just go straight to highlighting these with some Mephiston Red. With the staff part painted, let's spend some time going into some detail about painting the power blade. Start by painting the blade first of all with Sotek Green, and this will become our mid-tone which can then blend into darker colours and lighter colours. To help create a smoother blend or transition between the colours, we want to make the paint more transparent, and this is easily done just by diluting it. This is basically what a glaze is. The colours I'm going to use to paint the power weapon are Stegadon Scale Green, Sotek Green, Temple Guard Blue, and Baroroth Blue. I'll be diluting each paint as I go along to create the glaze with Lamy Medium, and I tend to find double the amount of Lamy Medium is about right. Start with some Temple Guard Blue, and when you're glazing you don't want a lot on your brush to give you more control. Also, when you're depositing the glaze onto the surface, you'll notice that you'll get little drops of the glaze where your brush finishes. This is where the colour will be strongest as the glaze dries. So best practice is to work your brush towards the area you want the colour to be strongest. Build up the glaze slowly waiting for each pass to dry first until you're happy with how it looks. The second colour we want to work with is going to be Stegodon Scale Green to glaze in the darker areas of the blade. You want this glaze to be stronger in the opposite direction to the Temple Guard Blue Glaze. Once you're happy with that, we're going to go back to using Sotek Green and glaze this overlapping both the lighter and darker areas helping to blend the colours some more. The last colour we're going to glaze with is Baroroth Blue and we want to continue to build up from the Temple Guard Blue repeating the process we've just gone through. Let's now highlight the blade by painting all the edges with Blue Horror and then White Scar can be used as a spot highlight to pick out certain areas of the edges we want to stand out more. With the staff and blade painted, we can now get the last few bits finished. The last few details to finish on our custody are the helmet details and gems around the armour, so let's get the helmet finished first. For the plume, start with some Mephiston Red, then pick out the details with some Wild Rider Red, and finish the plume by highlighting some of the strands with Fire Dragon Bright. For the lenses, paint a small dot of white scar in the centre of each lens. You can then use a small amount of Blood Angel's Red Contrast. The last detail I want to show you how to paint are going to be all the gems you see around the armour. Begin by painting all the gems with the Baden Black, then paint some Sotek Green in the bottom right of each gem. You now want to paint a thin line going around the edge of the gems, treat this like you would doing a fine highlight. Finish the gems with a small dot of white scar in the top left corner. And finally, to finish our Solar Watch Custody, you can be fancy and use some hard coat on all those gems. Our Solar Watch Custody is now finished and I hope I've been able to show you how you can go about painting yours. Make sure to also check out my other tutorial on painting a custode in the classic gold armour. And I also show you how to paint the lightning pattern you see on the power weapon. Thank you for watching, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. 
If you did, please give the video a like and let me know in the comments below. And if you don't want to miss out on future tutorials, make sure to subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.